Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Modded Minecraft 1.12 playing here on the Dire Wolf 20 mod pack. How's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm over by where we had moved all our base location to. And we've got, well, we got something special planned today. This is episode 50. Welcome to episode 50. Wow, 50. That's amazing. So we're, we're going to do a little bit of a project today. We're, we need to make it so that this base can be turned on and off at the flip of a switch and really what I want to do is play with the RF tools screens and then while we're doing that while we're going around our base we'll get a little bit of a world tour so I will kill two birds with one stone so let's get started And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the past few episodes, we've been working on Draconic Evolution. We've gotten to the height of it here, and you can see that I've got the best armor in the game on. Can't you tell? Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Of course, I'm kidding because you can't see it. We've we've hidden it, but it is there. You can tell because my, my HUD, heads up display, has all of that armor overlay stuff on it. I've not fully delved into what all of that means, and I don't really mean to. Today, we need to go and uh, go, go take a look at some of the changes, and then we need to be able to turn off our base from an RF Tools screen. So up here, last time we were together, and the past few times, I've had a bunch of compact machines up here, and I've consolidated all of them into here. This is now the storage area, and if we take a look in here, and then we go up, you'll see that there is a another compact machine right there. That has a tunnel that goes to our, our solar panel. And so if we go into here, we should find that our, our dragon energy ball is increasing in... Oh, nope. Okay. It did not work. It left me out. Okay. So I guess you have to get right close to it. There we go. Okay. Now, come over here. And yeah, we're getting 104k RF a tick coming in. About 64% filled up on that thing. So, uh, over here, nothing different. Let's just exit. And, and here we go. So, we've got all the machines lined up out here. Okay. And then, uh, a little point of note. Let's exit here real quick and go over to over this way. You can see that the dangerous bees section has been moved and then along with my sludge boiler, which was over here. Sludge boiler, I've moved into the machines, uh, machines machine, if that makes sense. And then the dangerous bees are in their own compact machine in the hive. So let's take a look at that real quick, hive, and then we can come over here and see dangerous bees. And look. Oh, wow. Vines everywhere. Lovely. So this thing we've got still still using the redstone receiver. And, and, and that way it keeps us out of danger. But just in case we need to come in here, we, can, we have our entry point far away from the potential dangerous bees. And then we've got all of the items that are coming out of that going, uh, exiting through the wall of this thing. And if we leave the machine, all of the items should go into here. But we've got no dangerous bees running at the moment. So, uh, yeah, so let's, let's go back here and we need to make a few machines. I've got my shopping list right here. We've, we need to make some redstone relays, probably need to make a few more, but We'll grab those just in case we get a crescent hammer. I don't know if we'll need another tunnel or not. Or the signal and plated impulse item duct. Need a breaker switch. Some impulse item ducts. Redstone receiver. Redstone transmitter. And we'll get the red prints. So we've got some redstone relays. That's fine. We've got redstone retrievers. Okay, that's cool. We need to get a screen. Uh, we need a storage crate. A screen controller. And a button screen module. So... Let's take a look at those. We can actually grab a storage crate like so. I don't know why we need one of those at the moment. Let's just grab a few of them. And then let's make, probably gonna need a few screen, a couple of screens. So 
Let's do that real quick. Make this screen, creative screen, we'll just do this one. It's going to need a machine base. And let's make a couple of them right like that. Okay, so we got that. And then we're also going to need the RF Tools wrench. Uh, let's see, this one, Smart Wrench. Let's make that. And then we need... Uh, shift. Okay, that can't be infused, but we are going to need a screen controller. And that's also RF tools. Okay, so so no change here. Machine frame, make that. And then screen controller. Bob's your uncle, we got a screen controller. Okay. And then probably should also grab power cell. And then let's head up into the machines area. I do believe that's where we've got, got what we need. Got the infuser. Does that have? No. We need to get some dimensional shards. Let's put this guy right here. And we need one, two, three, four. Yeah, just enough. Up. Back into here. So we need to infuse this thing so it takes less power overall. Chuck all of those in. Uh, you know what? We'll grab this. Fill that up. Okay. And then we put our screen controller in here. And then dimensional shards up there. Okay, so that's going to fill up. While that's filling up, what I want to do is take a look first. Okay, so screen controller we'll put into the main area. So we'll put our screen somewhere up here. Okay. And then also while we're waiting, let's get a button screen module. And we'll need a few of those. So we might as well make a few at the same time. So we need that let's make a bunch of buttons because why not we're pretty much rolling in in our resources here so so yeah all right so first order of business let's take a look at uh, all of this okay so diesel generation we've got uh, we've got a redstone receiver in there we've got the farms auto crafting the hive mob farm and machines i think First order of business is the diesel generation. So let's go in here. And I, I think I've shown you this. We're not going to run this. We're just going to come up here and go to our redstone receiver. And we take one of these button screen modules and we see we're on channel five. We shift right click. And if you were able to see it, yeah, there we go. Copied channel five to button module. If we go here, channel five, can we, uh, did that get rid of it? No, no, didn't, uh, didn't do anything. Okay. And so now those settings are copied to that button screen module, and we should be able to leave from here and go back up to our machines area and see if our screen controller is filled. Yep. hundred percent infused. And so we can exit from here. Let's go up and then we will say maybe you're right here. Uh, is that going to, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a problem. We need to keep our food right here. Where is the back? Okay. Right there. So the absolute center is going to be on that spot right there. We will put the advanced power cell like that and we'll set it to out and then fill back in that guy. And then we'll get our screen controller and put it right there. And then what we do is we'll put our screens uh, like this right here. Let's take the smart wrench and make it bigger. Yes, there we go. Okay, and we'll do this and same thing. Okay, full on three by three, okay. And then what we do is we say scan and we've got two connected screens. I guess that's fine. Yeah, we've got plenty of RF going into it. Okay. Sneak right click for GUI and insertion of modules. So we should be able to say, put this button screen in. Oh, no, I didn't want that one. I want this one to go in and we will say diesel. And that's going to be toggle. And now we've got that thing showing up. Okay. And so now what we can do is right click 
And that should turn on the diesel generator, and we'll find out soon enough once we go into here. Yep, sure enough, it's running. My goodness, is that loud? We could put on the head, head uh, headphones or ear covering, but, but there you go. Okay, so uh, the diesel generator is running. We don't need to run it because we've got plenty of RF. So let's go back up here and we will shift or we will right click that and that should turn it off. Okay, so that's how we're going to do that one. We take a button screen module, we right click it on a receiver and then we go from there. So um, so that's how, how to do that. If we go into the mob farm, let me just show you this real quick and you'll see how I'm able to do this one. I'm not gonna do everything on camera with you because that would be rather annoying. This is the transmitters. Okay, and the receivers are in there. So I will get a button control module for each of those. Okay, and then we've got one for channel 14. There's channel 14 right there. And how about here? Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so so we'll make one for channel 14. And how about... Um, I guess channel 14 also handles that mob crusher. Back here, I thought we had something else as well. Channel 14, the mob slaughter factory. I guess we're not using that one. I don't know why we've got it, but uh, that's, that's what I'll need to do. So um, we'll do... Uh, let's just do not that one. Let's get a button screen module and say shift right click. Okay. And then we'll exit the premises like so. And we'll go up to here and take our button screen module. And let's put that over in here. Okay. And we'll say mob farm and toggle. Okay. Oh, is that, hmm, let's see what that does. So we had it on, let's see if everything is, okay, all the lights are off. Huh, so we need that to be inverted. I wonder if we can do that on the screen. All of the lights are off right now, let's, exit from here and see if we can do something about this uh we don't need the red print and we don't need the lever so let's do that button toggle so if that's on how about this let's grab that and then And see again? No, those are off. Well, maybe we just leave it like that, but that seems kind of counterintuitive. I don't know if I like that. Light. Um. Hmm. I thought I clicked mob farm, but maybe I wasn't close enough. Let's go back over here. Mob farm. Go in here. Okay, all the lights are on. Maybe let's just leave it like that, okay? And if I can find something with inverting that, we'll do that, okay? But for now, we'll just leave it as as uh, such as it is. Now, the next order of business, I wanna show you one, one of these from start to finish, okay? Do I have receivers on me? No, I don't. Uh, let's make not a receiver, a retriever. And we can get rid of that and that. And then the transmitter will keep. Tunnels I don't think we're gonna need. We are gonna need a button screen module. And this we will put maybe right here for now. So let's make a retriever. I like these, these are pretty cool. Okay, and then how about, do we have any filters? We got one, so that should be sufficient. 
Uh, now I know what the medium storage crates are for. Okay, so let's go up to the farm, all right? And we'll go around like so. We've got to get to... I don't, I don't have this thing running, so that's why... Uh, that's why all the trees are filled up. Maybe I should have made a slightly smaller farm here. Who knows? But let's come up here. And we're going to say right here, instead of a retriever or a servo right there pulling items out, we're going to go active on redstone signal. Okay, that's fine. And... We need to come all the way around here. Yeah, there we go. It says active on redstone signal. Okay, so there is no redstone signal right now. That's fine. What we need is a redstone receiver uh, and a transmitter. So we'll do like this. Set this down. And that's got channel 18. I don't know if that's the channel that we want. In fact, I think it is probably not the channel we want. So we erase it like that, putting it in our inventory. Now we're on channel 19. We'll take a receiver like this. Shift. No, no, no. Shift right click. And yeah, channel set to 19. And we'll put it over here next to the plant gatherer. And then we can take a button module like here and write uh, copy channel 19 to button module. Awesome. Okay, so we've got that. Um, yeah, I guess that's all we need to do. So that's not quite as bad as I was thinking. Our farms down below are going to be a little bit more odd, but can we can we handle that? How how do we do this one? Okay, so um, I've shown you how we're going to do the button screen modules. And so I've now got a button screen module for channel 19. That's going to be for that farm. But I want one for all of these farms right here. And I figure maybe we'll do a retriever instead of servos. But then that doesn't... How do we stop this from pulling items? That's what I need to know. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. This can be active on redstone high. But how do we get that signal with... Um, hmm. Yeah, it's not like we can turn these things on or off with a redstone signal. I don't think we can. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But we could just stop the flow of items into here. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to go off camera for a bit and have a think about this. Um, or maybe we... So this, this is our farm area, so you're kind of seeing that. Let's exit this one, and then um, what I'll do is show you in the hive. Okay, so over here, this one's not too bad. We can have a receiver or retriever pulling all the items out from, from all the hives into uh, some other storage unit. We've got that right there. And then... Um, and then we can control all of the hives using redstone uh, redstone relays, kind of like we do on the dangerous bees. Let's come over here. I'll show you how that goes. Okay, so uh, in fact, we can also get a button screen module for this. Okay, so while we're while we're at it, we've got a button screen mod or we've got a receiver. Okay. That's what, channel 6, and we've got channel 6 right there. Okay, so channel 6 goes into one of these redstone relays. I've got that set to redstone input, and then on each of these industrial apiaries, we've got redstone relays pointed in, and they are set to output. And then over here, 
instead of having the having servos pull items out, we've got a retriever that's pulling all items out of the apiaries and putting it into this medium storage crate, which then gets pushed out to uh, outside. And each of these apiaries is set up to do enable on redstone. So that's how that works. All right, so that's kind of the name of the game. I've got to figure out what to do for our farms. And then you see this, we've got a bunch of apiaries here that we've got to change this whole setup for. So I'm going to do all that off camera. I'll bring you back once I've got it all done and show you the whole thing uh, working together. Back in a bit. Well, you can see I've been pretty busy since we were last together. Ooh, I got an achievement. That's cool. Okay. And yeah, so I think I've got this thing figured out. Let's take a quick look here. So I've gotten all of the uh, screen modules in for the mob farm. And this is the weird part. Okay, so the mob farm, it's got to be, the button's got to be pressed in for the mob farm to be off. But the hive I've got turned on and the cloches I have turned on as well. So I didn't have, I don't think I've got any other stuff here. So what you're seeing right here, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll just start with, uh, with an overall tour, uh, world tour here. Uh, it is, it is dark. Okay. So let's, let's come in here to our hidey hole and go like so our hidey hole this is the uh, this is the cabin that we set up uh, well, quite some time ago and i've never gotten around to changing it up so so yeah there we go and then we come over here to our our power supply so this is the palladium level i think it's tier three on yeah no tier four okay so tier four on the environmental tech solar panels and then we still got our water wheels from quite some time ago and those are working just fine and now i have made it such that our compact machine is right underneath the solar panel so not too shabby we've got our me system in here and then up top we've got the rest of our compact machines one by one all the way across so let's start over here in the machines machine Bunch of one-off machines, nothing too much automated here. We do have an automated ore processing right here, and that's using RF Tools Builders. And then over here, we've got automated lava production. We're exporting phosphor and sand, and that's doing just fine. I'm not using too much of it. Right now, it's just being exported for our Tinker's Smeltery right there. We've got a Tinker's Workshop thing right here. And then here is our sludge refiner. Over here is the industrial, no, no, not industrial, immersive engineering setup, coke oven, blast furnace, alloy cone. We didn't even go with the advanced blast furnace, so not, not too shabby there. Any other machines to go into here? No, so we can exit here and we'll go back up. And then the mob farm, we did that quite some time ago, and that was right around the time of the great uh, great rollback so we made it once and then we made it again and there we go so we've got cursed earth there in the bottom we've got a mob crusher that's going to take care of them and then we've got spawners here resturbed mob spawners from extra utilities they spawn in a nine by nine area around the spawner and so we've got this little extra spot here for flowing slime to go uh, push everything into the middle since we can't change the overall, uh, I tried to put some add-ons in here and I don't think the Mob Crusher takes add-ons, but no extra machines in here and now everything in here is set up to use the button screen modules. So I think we're pretty good to go there. All right, the next order of business is the Hive. And let me show you what I've put together here. We've got the Dangerous Bees, I've already shown you that one. And then over here, I switched out the signal and plated impulse item ducts for, well, it's still signal and plated impulse item ducts carrying items and RF. And then we've also got redstone relays instead. And all of these industrial APRs are set to enable on redstone. And then the relay is an output. So, so let's go down here. And yeah, this was almost already set up and I don't think we can fully see what's going on in here 
Yeah, there we go. Just barely, can you see? There is a redstone, or not a redstone, just a retriever, resonant retriever, that pulls everything from the industrial apiaries, throws it into the storage crate, and then the standard processing just goes on. So I had already set that up. Over here, we pulled down a couple of impulse item ducts, put on a redstone relay. This one's an input reading from this particular redstone receiver right here, and that is attached to the screen controller, so, or the screen. So that's the hive in a nutshell. I don't think there's any other machines to take a look at there, so we can exit. And then auto crafting. So this one is hooked up to our main system through the quantum ring. It looks like it is turned on at the moment. And then we've got another machine in here. This is the wither grinder. Yep. Okay, so items come in to here no 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 in yeah in from here yeah goes into the wither builder wither builder builds the wither and then the draconic evolution mob grinder kills the wither all the items get sucked into this storage crate and then shipped out the side and then we've got some ME stuff attached to it. Okay, yeah. So the interface uh, right here pushes items into the compact machine, and then this resonant servo pulls the items back out and throws them back into the interface. And so we can auto craft nether stars, which is pretty cool. And then over here uh, on the second layer, we've got all of our crafting uh, molecular similar stuff. And we're not even, uh, maybe we're a little bit, a little bit full on that one, but. Not too bad. Next order of business is the farms. And this one, I showed you how the tree farm went. We've got a redstone receiver that's hooked directly to the screen. And then we've got down below, I figured, figured this out. Had to go look on the wiki. The immersive engineering manual does not say, but these garden cloches respond to RF. And so I've got a couple of lines here same thing that we saw before, redstone relay with input up against the receiver. And then we've got output right here. If we were to deselect that button, then all of the garden cloches would start firing off again. But we really don't need those items anymore. So this is the farming cube. Let's exit there. And then, yeah, so we've done that. We looked at diesel generation already, but, but there we go. We've got some thermoelectric generators right there those power the refinery and the fermenter and the squeezers and then all of that feeds liquids into our diesel generator up here which is not currently on we don't need it on the uh, the solar panel is doing just fine now uh, next order of business the thermoelectric array this one is kind of fun yep we've got thermoelectric generators all packed in here and then we're alternating Eulorium and Packed Ice and shipping all of the RF into Advanced Power Cells. This is an overkill cube. It was just kind of fun to put together. Now, I believe that covers almost everything. We've got one more over here. This is our Dragon Ball energy thing. And then also our crafting fusion crafting setup. And then also energy infuser if we need it, but we don't. And that's also hooked up to our ME system using a quantum ring. So a couple of quantum rings, our ME system is drawing probably a decent amount of power there. So lots of devices on that. The next order of business, what I want to do is head back to spawn and let's make sure that I've got a golden lasso. And then we're going to throw the engineer's manual in here. Let's uh, go to this and I think we can go directly to spawn. And we're going to do a general world tour real quick. Hopefully it's not nighttime. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. Over here, uh, this is a build that Original Junior put together. Did a good job on it. Come around like so. Yep, it's, he calls it the Spawnuary. So it's a little sanctuary for if you get stuck uh, coming, having to come back to spawn. You can get up in there pretty quickly. And he's got some tributes to patrons or supporters of some form but this is spawn and over here that's interesting 
Yeah, you may remember that I had the secondhand meat juice concept going. That got rolled back in the great rollback, and I just decided not to worry about it. So, yeah, we're not going to continue there. Next order of business over here. This is the first, first village I came to when I first started 50 episodes ago. My goodness. Okay, and then we've got our starter home over there, and I've already been over there, and I've brought a golden lasso. Let's go over to our starter home. Okay. And we came over here, found a village that we could get set up in. It had an immersive engineering um, building. Yeah, I don't know what they call this thing. But if you remember when we were first setting this whole thing up, I had a villager drop down here. And I think it's time to return him to his colleagues. So I've got a golden lasso. And there we go. We can return him back to the village. And instead of... Him being stuck down here forever and a day. So let's do that. Close off the uh, close off our, our guy there, and then we're going to set you down right there. And so that's our starter home. We've moved out from there. What did we leave over here? Astral sorcery stuff. We never got into that. Probably won't. Let's head back home. And this is the part where I am. Well, I'm kind of um. Uh, what's the word? I'm I'm not too not too keen on, or well, it's not that I'm not keen on it. So when we first started this uh, this adventure together back on episode one, my goal through the series was to one learn bees and two play with compact machines and eventually get to where my bees were producing the materials I needed for the compact machines. And guess what? We are there. The bees are working just fine, okay? And um, and yeah, so uh, we we've um, we've we've kind of done what we set out to do. And I could there's plenty of content still to go. Let me get one more thing here. Uh, let's do this, and then that we'll just leave there. Um, so so when I first saw the pack and I looked at the mod list. I, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the path that I had set up. And so I've learned bees. I've accomplished that. And I've played with compact machines. We've done the new environmental tech. We've played a lot more with Draconic Evolution in the new, uh, uh well, it's not, it's not much different from 1.10, which I, I played with over on Hyperantics. But, but yeah, overall, we've played with a few different mods, had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, it's actually time to say, add you to the series and that's that's uh i don't know if i'm going to put that on the title um but uh but yeah this this is the last episode of the dire wolf 20 series so a couple more things of note if we happen to give out the seed or the map um over here i've got some dissipation charges and a rainmaker but i am going to come over here and we're going to say um we're going to unchunk load. Yep. Unchunk load. And then I will probably unguard the whole thing. And then we do need to take a look at our statistics and see number of deaths. Two. And then we'll go over here. This side of our base. We never did fully develop it. Um, not quite the way I wanted. I ended up going more with compacting everything down. So here's our... our um, separate dimensions island we've got the nether deep dark and mining dimension and then over here we've got a couple grave markers both of those happen to be from hives so i was killed by bees a couple times we are going to end our our series over here in our our house we've got our bedroom got our kitchen and then what we're going to do is take all of our items off like this we're going to put everything over in here like so just in case you happen to come back over here and uh, if anybody wishes to come over here they can all the items that you may need are in here we've got angel ring if you need it personal shrinking device although i don't think it'll use my gp 
think you have to build your own. But let's put these down on, we're going to retire this set of armor. Oh, it's, that's funny. Let's do this. What I want to do is make it such that we can uh, not hide it. Okay. We're going to unhide all of it. Okay. Yep. And then the leggings, let's do that. Unhide. Okay. And then the boots. All right. Now, now we should be able to say, uh, we should be able to put these on the armor stand and then show up. Okay. So we're going to retire the draconic armor. We're not going to go to the chaos guardian or anything like that, but I have thoroughly enjoyed myself and I hope you have as well. It has been a lot of fun going through the mods and having the interaction with you. And uh, thank you so much for the comments and suggestions and questions and likes and, and all the support through this whole series. It's been a lot of fun. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. We do have one man, one mod going on right now, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to be closing this one down uh, because I've reached the end of what I wanted to do. So, Hopefully you enjoyed this series. Hopefully you enjoyed that walk through what we have accomplished here. And, um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in whatever may come next. Bye-bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back because I forgot something. I thanked you for all the support, but I forgot to thank some very important people as well. And a big shout out to dadcraft73 for putting together this server and letting me come on and occasionally wreck it and also big thanks to java dad original junior and wild trekker and uh, the pigglesworth and wc hamilton for a little bit thank you for for the fun it's been a lot of fun doing multiplayer minecraft um, modded minecraft so uh big big shout out to those guys if you want to get more content from the direwolf 20 server and from minecraft in general go check out their channels links in the description box below to both twitch and youtube so uh, or for those that stream so so yeah there's certainly more content still coming out from the server but it's just that my particular playthrough is done so again thanks to them for for the fun times on the server and a big thank you to you for the support but that's going to be it thank you so much we'll see you around Bye bye